This next case is a 65-year-old male with severe varus disease, both in his extension and flexion gap. We will perform a total knee replacement utilizing sensors to depict the overall alignment of the knee, its effect on soft tissue balance, as well as rotation. The surgeon in this case takes the tibial crest as a reference point to correlate his posterior slope. He takes the knee into extension and closes the medial capsule after defining that his rotation is appropriate. He sees an extension significant medial compartment tension. His slope to the tibial crest on the AP box in the upper right hand corner is 10.5. He takes the knee into flexion and shows significant medial loads compared to the lateral side as well. The first step now is to detect any malalignment on his tibial cut. By pivoting the leg off the heel, the accelerometer in the right upper hand corner is telling him his tibial cut is in 2.6 degrees of valgus, which could be adding to the overall medial soft tissue tension. The surgeon now takes the knee into extension and rotates the hip joint to incorporate the distal femoral angle and the computer will show him the overall mechanical axis. In this case, the overall limb alignment was seen to be still in valgus at 2.8 degrees. So here the surgeon has the opportunity to refine his cut on the tibial side and to add more va varus to make the cut more neutral, which should potentially improve the soft tissue balance on the medial compartment. The surgeon now adds more varus to his cut, resecting more of the sclerosis on the proximal tibial plateau. After he has refined this cut, he also removes any posteromedial osteophyte on the medial tibia. This also will detent the medial structures as well. After making the full resection protecting the PCL ligament, the surgeon now will retrial re the implants. By resecting the posteromedial corner, the semimembranosis has been released as well. So here now the surgeon takes the knee into extension and improved compartment balance both in flexion and extension are seen. The surgeon rechecks his cut which was in 2.8 degrees of valgus prior to see how much varus he has corrected. And by rocking once again the center of the ankle through the knee joint the accelerometer tells him that he's improved his cut to 1.4 degrees of varus. The knee now is taken into extension, stabilized, and the leg is rotated off the hip joint, and the mechanical axis has been improved to two. So here now he has improved optimized contact points, improved flexion, mid-flexion, but when he gets further into extension, he still, still sees some tension on the medial structures. In full extension, his loads intercompartmental are improved and balanced. So the surgeon will finally do a fine tuning on the medial collateral ligament in the mid flexion and flexion position. He evaluates the rollback which is symmetrical and he has a stable posterior drawer depicted by the contact points staying centralized. So he puts the knee into the mid flexion flexion position. He palpates the tight anterior medial collateral fibers and with a pie crusting technique now improves the flexion as well as mid flexion loads. So here the surgeon has utilized both the alignment from the accelerometer as well as the central loads through a full range of motion to optimize this patient's knee intraoperatively. Once again he has excellent intercompartmental balance and when he takes the knee through a range of motion has symmetrical rollback and balanced flexion and extension space. The final implant is inserted. The surgeon now takes the knee through a full range of motion with excellent flexion. He has improved contact through the full range of motion in a stable posterior drawer. So by utilizing intraoperative sensors to define the overall alignment as well as the soft tissue balance, surgeons can now quantify what they feel to improve post-op outcomes.